So in this video, I want to show you how you can use OIM analysis uh, to quickly and easily look at the grain size and grain structure uh, of a material. So I'm going to load this data set. This is an aluminum film to start. When we load the data set, it's going to go ahead and create a, a high confidence partition here. We can look at the orientation map. Uh, you can see here it's mostly a blue one 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 orientation. If we look at the lattice as we through here, we can see where they change here. And what we're interested in knowing is what's the grain size of this film. And so to do that, we have to decide what we could define as a grain tolerance angle, or what misorientation angle do we consider to be a grain, si a grain definition. And so if I look under our properties here, our default value is a five degree tolerance angle. Misorientations greater than this are considered part of a grain boundary. So we can see the grains that are defined by that misorientation angle by hitting this for our unique grain color map. It'll calculate the grains based on that definition. And then it's going to just show us a map where the grains are randomly colored. No two grains, adjacent grains have the same color to show the, the, the morphology and the size. Okay, and we can also easily see the grain size distribution. Again, from the quick gen toolbar here, this shows us the grain size histogram. In this case, it's diameter versus area fraction. If I want a number fraction, I can right click on here, go to properties, edit parameters and go to a number fraction. This is sort of what more generally what we think of in terms of a, of a numerical average where we're just adding up all the sizes and dividing by the number of grains. You can see here that it looks like a, a pretty nice distribution. We have a good sampling of things. If we want to know how many grains are, are present, I can right click on here and say summary view. And it tells me there are 494 grains, 90 of them are edge grains. So we you can see if we look at here, we have the, the, um, the ability to include or exclude the grains in the calculation. Um, just depends on how you numerically want to approach it. Obviously, if they're interior grains, they're, they're full grains and can be calculated. Um, whereas if they're on the edge, which is incomplete and may bias your statistics a little bit, it just depends on how many you, you want to see. Um, and if you see things like I see this little tail here at the end, if I'm worried about it being a little bit here, another thing we can adjust is the number of pixels, uh, the minimum number of pixels required for a grain. So in this case, the minimum is two. We have to have at least two pixels of the same orientation within five degrees. So I'll set that to four. It'll recalculate. Maybe that tweaks the tail just a little bit. So there's a little change in the distribution. Uh, if we wanted to see the effects, I can put these next to each other. I can close these. I'll bring up an image quality map. You know, if I wanted to see where just the large grains are, I can do some highlighting here, and it will show me here. This kind of shows the effect of the numerical things is that, you know, that's on the one half of the distribution, but it's the larger half. So it looks like it fills up most of the screen. But if we look down here, this is the lower half. Those are where the smaller grains are located. And so that's a quick way we can get some grain information. There are a number of other charts that are available for measuring grain size. Um, we can look at it in terms of points. The one we're looking at it by default is diameter, but we can look at grain area, ASTM values. We can use intercept and intercept length. And we can also look at the effect of the tolerance angle on the grain diameter. And that's useful sometimes when you have a subcell structure, deformation structure for understanding things. One more thing I want to show when we're talking about grain size is what happens when we have a twinned material. So this is now a copper thin film that will have uh, quite a bit more twinning and we'll be able to see that when we open the data set here. I'll close all these. Again, we'll look at our orientation map. We see these, these uh, again, a lot of strong 1-1 texture, but a lot of the twin boundaries here. If we look at our misorientation plot, we'll see there's a big peak at 60 degree misorientations, which are the twins. And if we look initially at our grain, this is our grain map here and our grain size distribution. Kind of that side of distribution with an area fraction. Now, if I want to remove the twins from this, I can copy and paste my partition definition. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my definition. So I'm going to go in here and say properties and grain size. And there's an algorithm in here that says ignore twin boundaries from the grain grouping algorithm. So I'm just going to select easily. I'm just going to say, let's look at our recrystallization twins, and I'll add our secondary recrystallization twins for copper. 
and just use the defaults. Now it's going to recalculate the grains, but every time it finds a boundary that's defined by that specific misorientation, it ignores that from the grain grouping. So now if we look at this, um, this is the grain map before, this is the grain map after twins. And you can see quite a difference in twin structure. Uh, and so we call this sometimes a twin corrected grain structure, or grain uh, map. And so EBSD is a very uh, useful tool for having this data to be able to group together similar orientations to quickly find grain size information.